Hey folks, it's instrument time. Today we're going to discuss my oldest guitar. And by oldest, I mean actual oldest guitar, not the one I've owned the longest. This one is essentially as old as me. And that would be my 1973 built Guild F212. So Guild's been around a long time. Uh, they started out in Hoboken. Uh, they moved to Westerly, Rhode Island. Uh, Westerly is where they built the vast majority of their, what people think of their classic, vintage, historical guilds. Uh, they were there until 96 or 97. Uh, Fender bought Guild in 95. They kept them in Westerly for about two years. And then they moved it to uh, various locations. I can't remember the order. Uh, one was Tacoma after Fender bought and murdered Tacoma guitars. And uh, one was the California plant where they build their electrics. And then third plant was back on the East Coast. And now Guild is owned by Cordoba. And they are built in Oxnard, California. About a block and a half from the Larravee uh, manufacturing plant uh, of all things. So. Hopefully they're smart enough to go down the street and uh, say hi. Anyway, uh, the F212 is a cool size. It is essentially uh, exactly the same size as a Taylor GA, except this was built in 1973, so we know who copied whom. 16-inch uh, lower bout, Sitka top, which is just aged gorgeously, actually. Uh, no, no, no fake tan toner on these. Uh, they did, however, stain the backs and sides. I'm not sure why. Um, it looks nice, but so does unstained clean mahogany. Uh, one of the things Guild is known for is their one-piece arched backs. This does not have a one-piece arched back. Um, this one has a two-piece back, and you can see the braces inside. Uh, the same was true for the 312, which was the rosewood version. Uh, they mostly use the arch backs on the Dreadnoughts and uh, the 17 inch Super Jumbos. So uh, those are cool and really, really heavy. Uh, this is not so heavy. Uh, 25.4 inch standard scale, as one would expect. Uh, this one has the Chesterfield logo. Uh, I'm not sure why they call it that. Someone does. Uh, this one is, as I said, 40. 849 years old. It was built in 73. It is due for a neck reset or really close to needing a neck reset. As long as I don't go too far up the neck, it's okay. Um, unfortunately, one of the things about guilds is that they glued the necks in really, really well. They glued the fretboard down really, really well. And therefore, uh, it's actually quite expensive to get a neck reset on a guild. So I've been putting it off. The nut, I measured it with my handy dandy calipers. It comes in at 1.835 inches. That's halfway between 1 and 13 sixteenths and 1 and 7 eighths. I'm sure they call it a 1 and 7 eighths inch nominal. That's 46.6 millimeters for folks who aren't in the US. Um, lower bout is 16 inches, pretty much dead on. 16 and a 16th maybe uh, if that so nice clean fretboard rosewood fretboard rosewood bridge uh, there's a chance these could be Brazilian rosewood I'm not sure certain uh, certainly I'm not going to try to take it outside the country uh, one of the major issues with guitars of this age is these open back tuners um, Six on a plate tuners, especially vintage ones, are um, garbage. They're, they're horrible. They're terrible. Uh, this thing is a pain in the butt to tune, and I've actually replaced these tuners with ones from another vintage guild. And I have the originals, which are identical and even worse than this one. Um, this one's clearly seen some, you know, gigging and abuse. It's got a big chunk of nitro missing off the neck here. Uh, it's got another little chip out here. Uh, surprisingly though, no cracks. Uh, and that's actually really surprising to me because in Arizona, or Arizona as I like to say, 
you do want to humidify your instruments or they generally will crack so finding a guitar of this vintage in Arizona without top cracks or side cracks or back cracks is actually pretty rare um, certainly back in the 70s and 80s uh, nobody really knew how to humidify their instruments or that it was really necessary uh, that <clears throat> I don't think I really came into the forefront until the late 90s maybe early 2000s when people really understood that so I've got this one tuned down a full step uh, due to the aforementioned neck needing to be reset so has that low, low growly 12 string sound that guilds are known for as opposed to the more chimey sounds that a tailor might be known for. And sustain. I mean, it, it sings quite well. So, obviously, uh, if you're looking at vintage instruments, if you don't know what you're doing, have someone check it out for you beforehand. Uh, there's often hidden repairs. I actually got this one very inexpensively off eBay because somebody had advertised it uh, incorrectly. And they'd advertised it as one of the, it, uh, as one of the import models. Um, so... This one is not. This was made in the USA. Uh, Guild has, over the past, especially when they're owned by Fender and currently now by Cordoba, uh, an import line uh, that has gone by various names: uh, GAD, Guild Acoustic Design. Um, for a while, they used Westerly as the name of their import line, like Westerly Series, which really angered a lot of Guild fans because we thought it was misleading to call them westerly when they were made in china and not actually westerly uh, i'm not sure what they're calling them now they might be back to guild acoustic designer they might just call them guild and you know check the label to see where they're made now, the new import line is actually quite affordable and they're quite nice um, china's really up their game on manufacturing in the last 10 15 years um, it's really hard to compete <clears throat> haven't played one of the new uh, ones in uh, made in Oxnard, uh, they were having problems getting the factory back up and running due to environmental regulations. Um, nitrocellulose finish. Uh, the new guilds made in Oxnard also have nitrocellulose finish, and that was actually uh, the sticking point on their environmental certificates uh, dealing with the outgassing uh, from the nitrocellulose. They needed to uh, put in a really, really good scrubber and air handling system to deal with the fumes from nitrocellulose. So uh, they're one of the few who newer, it's like a new factory, uh, instruments still using nitro uh, traditionally like Martin does rather than a UV cure poly like Taylor or Larrabee. So surprising but cool. Uh, nitro finishes are easy to touch up. That is one of the major advantages of them, but they're also softer and they do Damage easier, as you can see on this one here. So, this one does not have a pickup in it. Um, that's okay. I have guitars with pickups if I need to take them out and gig. So, if I was going to use this one to record, I might do that. I've used it on this channel, of course, before. And out playing live in smaller venues where I don't need to amplify. Anyway, that's about all I have on this. Um... I don't think these ever came with cutaways. It was the 70s. Those seem more modern. Um, truss rods. Truss rods. I should mention truss rods. So that is actually one of the really neat things about gilts, uh, especially the older ones, which is that underneath this super, super wide truss rod cover, which you may or may not be able to see on camera. There we go. There are actually dual truss rods. So there's two. And that's one of the reasons the old vintage guild necks were so uh, thick, because they had to 
having large enough for two truss rods and having two truss rods on their 12 strings made the necks very very stiff and it's one of the reason Guild got a good reputation for building 12 strings back in the 60s and 70s and why you saw so many Guild 12 strings back during the Great Folk School scare is the two truss rods. Modern Guilds only have one truss rod. I believe they changed that when they were in Tacoma. They went to one truss rod with two carbon fiber reinforcing rods down the sides in order to add some stiffness. Um, I kind of like the classic we're going to just brute force this with two truss rods theory. Um, but <clears throat> they are a big neck, so gills do have a reputation, at least the older ones, of having a really thick neck on a 12 string. The new ones are definitely uh, smaller and tighter. And the other thing on this neck is, if you can see it, um, is a laminate three piece neck with a nice little piece of maple down the middle, uh, which gives a lot of uh, strength. Actually, quite a bit of uh, lateral strength compared to a single piece neck. Uh, a lot of Gibsons are like that too. So it, it's a cool little feature. Uh, that was the one main differentiator on guilds, uh, especially of the era compared to everyone else. So I would be remiss if I failed to mention that. So thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, you know, leave a comment below. If you have any comments, leave a comment below. If you have a cool old guild that you like to play, leave a comment below. The algorithm really likes it if you leave a comment below. And thanks for thanks again. And we'll see you next time on Instrument Time.